run through that, that road yeah, right there. Yeah, the um, rest of it, yeah. Uh, yeah, but you got a better sound. Yeah, I have more richer. Yeah, I have one just like that, too. One just like that. Let's go. Well, praise the Lord. <laughs>
tears so sweet to trust in Jesus just to take him at his word just to rest to year 
in two years. We, we never seem to know how to let go of things. We let, you know, it's, it's, it's like a suitcase that we just kind of sort of drag with us uh, everywhere we go. We never unpack the suitcase. We never allow the suitcase to be by itself. We never put the suitcase up. It's always with us. There are certain things in our lives that God wants us to release on tonight. It, it's time to clear up the books. The, if you are a company, small company, large company, if you are a business who wants to stay in business, you have to know the status of your account. You have to know, am I making money? Am I losing money? Are we profitable or are we not profitable? What are our assets? What are our liabilities? Any good business person would ask these questions simply to know where they are and what changes need to be made for the next year. So, so it, what happens is we, we, we take inventory, we look at the books, we see who do we owe, who owes us, what is the status of our company? Are we making money? Are we losing money? Do we need to raise prices? Do we need to uh, do we need to lay off anyone in this year because we're no longer profitable? I want to utilize this particular scripture on tonight, uh, coming out of the Amplified version. It says uh, uh, Hebrews twelve and one. Therefore, then. Since we are surrounded by such a cloud of witnesses yeah. to who have been born testimony to the truth. Now, these witnesses are familiar with the truth. It says, let us strip off and throw aside every encumbrance. And encumbrance is something that is, hinders us or causes us to slow down or to burden us, or to weigh us down as we're running. Unnecessary weight. An encumbrance is an unnecessary weight. And that sin, which is so readily, definitely, and cleverly clings to us, and angles, it, it, it just entangles us. Let us run with patience, endurance, and steadily, steadfastly, and actively persist the, uh, you see, the appointed, uh, of, the, uh, of the, the race that is set before us. So this is what has to happen. We have to know for a fact that we're running a race. We've got to run the race with patience. We cannot be loaded down as we run this race. We have to be, we, we, we have to be free yeah. from all the things that entangle us. If we're going to run a profitable business, we have to be free from all of this stuff. We have to be free from all of That is in our way. Stuff that gets in our way. Uh, These are things that, 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 that are causing us to be out of loss. I want to Read the, also, it says, therefore, see, we are compassed about, who says, great account of witnesses. Let us lay aside, lay aside, lay aside, lay aside every weight, lay aside every more burden, lay aside anything that stands in the way of me being all that God has for me in 2024. We are balancing the books on tonight. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. I want to take a look at some definitions on tonight as it relates to business. These are, these are accounting terms that we'll be looking at on tonight. The first word we're looking at is asset. What is an asset? It is a useful, valuable, quality, skill, or person. My car is an asset. My, 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 my computer, my laptop, my tablet, those are assets. Yeah. They add value to my ministry, to the ministry. They add value to my life. They're assets. They, they, they contribute. Now, a liability, 
Oh, I'm sorry. I'm jumping ahead of myself. Prophet. Prophet is the advantageous quality of benefiting or adding value to. My business is profitable because I'm making money. My business is profitable because people are coming into my store making purchases. So my so, so there is a profit. My, I'm, my, 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 the things that I'm doing are profitable. They're benefiting. They're adding value to my, my net worth. Now we're going to talk about loss. The fact of process of losing something or someone. Mm -hmm. And loss takes away from. Yeah. Loss takes away from that which I have added to. Loss is taking away. Loss is not adding. I lose value. Deficit. What is a deficit? I'm in the red. Mm -hmm. I'm in trouble. I'm, I'm, I'm out of balance. I'm, I'm, so the definition of deficit is the total amount by which money spent is more than money coming in. I'm spending more money than I'm making. So my books are out of balance. State of having spent more money than necessary. Last term, shortfall. An amount that is less than the level that was expected or needed. Shortfall, I'm, I'm, I'm short. I'm, 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 I'm suffering from a shortfall. A shortfall. So shortfalls are not good for businesses. Shortfalls cause us to be in a lose lose situations. Let's convert these terms and see if we can relate these terms to our lives. Let's talk about assets. What are your spiritual assets? What kinds of things do we do to add value to our spiritual life? Am I doing things that add value to my spiritual life? What kinds of things do I do? Prayer. Yeah. Fasting, yeah. fellowship, right. studying the word person, these things add value yeah. to my personal life. Yes, sir. Profit. God wants me to be profitable. Mm -hmm. So I have to engage in activities yeah. that are profitable, not activities that cause me to lose. Yeah. Deficit. We have friends that keep us in a deficit because our relationships are out of balance. We're out of balance. I'm always in a deficit with you. You're doing more for me than I can do for you. I'm, we're, out of, we're out of balance. Yeah. So now we're going to take a look. What does the Bible say about profit and loss? What does the Bible talk about in terms of us Living a life so yeah. that we can balance our books, go into the new year without all these stuff. We I know companies that still call me trying to collect the debt from 13 years ago. Because hmm. every seven years, it's supposed to drop off. Uh -huh. If they somebody buys that account, right. it just carries over. So they uh -huh. keep on calling. Uh -huh. They keep on calling. So what does the Bible say about profit and loss? Uh, Ecclesiastes 2.24 <clears throat> It says Nothing is better For a man that should Eat and drink That his Soul uh, Should be uh, good In his labor In other words, I'm self-sufficient I can take care of myself I don't need to depend upon Anyone other than God right. Because I'm working, I'm actively Participating yeah. in self-supporting myself. Malachi 3 and 10. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there might be food in my house. Mm -hmm. That's profitable. Giving is profitable. Giving adds value to your life. 
Because it's a contract between you and God. It's a financial agreement that you have. If you're not tithing, you're always going to be in deficit. You're always going to be, uh, you're always going to be in a liability situation. Romans 13, 8. Oh, no one anything except to love one another. A lot of us are out of balance because we take more than we give in our relationships. We take more than we give in our relationships. And Matthew 16, 26. For what does it profit a man who shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? We spend so much time thinking that we're being profitable, thinking that we're, 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 we're acquiring all of these things, but we're not adding value to our spiritual life. So when we look at the balance sheet, I'm more material than physical. Yeah. I have more material stuff than I do physical stuff. It should be the other way around. I should have more spiritual than physical. Amen. So we are going to take a look at some specific areas that we can address in our own lives to make sure that we stay in balance. What does God say about us? God wants us to live a balanced life. He doesn't want us to be uh, living in a deficit. Yeah. And you can come on down. We can see you. You can see you. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're going to everything that is a loss or that is causing us a deficit right. or to keep us in debt or yeah. that keeps us out of balance is in red. Uh -huh. The good stuff's in green. That means that's profitable. Yeah. So let's see where we're going to start here. Let's start with red. The first thing we need to take a look at. Lukewarm. Huh. Unstable and double-minded. Right. If we live a life of lukewarmness, if we live a life of being unstable, double-minded, we are always going to be in a deficit situation. We're never going to be profitable. God can never increase us because we can't make up our mind whether to serve him today or we're going to serve the devil on tomorrow. We just don't know. We're going to go to church tonight, but we're going to go to the club tomorrow. Yeah. So a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. Cannot be trusted. Can God trust you? The reason that there's no value being added to my life because God can't trust us because we're lukewarm, unstable, and double-minded. That's a deficit situation. That's something I need to take a look at. What areas of my life am I, un, am I lukewarm in? What areas do I need to tighten up on in my life that I'm unstable in? I'm unstable financially. I, I don't have a checking account because I don't know how to balance my checkbook. I don't know how to control my spending. And I'm double-minded. Right. I tell you one thing, do something else. Unstable, just, just unreliable. Unreliable. The next thing we can take a look at tonight is unhealthy relationships will keep us in a deficit situation. Unhealthy relationships is being somebody, being with someone that is always dragging us into places we don't need to go. It's unhealthy because that person is no good. They abuse us. They treat us wrong. They talk about us behind our back. They always keep us in bondage. These are the ones that are always, always, always taking, 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 never giving. It's unbalanced. Abusive relationships, physical abuse, spiritual abuse, any kind of relationship that is not contributing or adding value to my life is unhealthy. If you are not adding value to my life, we have no business being friends. You're still my Christian brother or my sister, but we can't, we can't walk together. How can two walk together unless they agree? We agree that my life, being in my life, I always say this. If you come into my life, your life will be better. 
I add value to people's lives. But I'm not going to waste my time. If you don't want to increase your own value, then I'm wasting my time. I'm wasting my resources. If, I, if, 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 if you are not profiting from our relationship, something is wrong. Our relationships should profit, be profitable. God wants it to be in profitable relationships, not unbalanced relationships. Then we look at unbalanced relationships. Unbalanced relationships, they're always, they never seem to be there for you. You're there for them, but they can never be there for you. I'm going to give you this for free. If somebody invites you out to dinner and you have the money, they'll go. Why? Because you're perpetrating, you've, or you're coming in with nothing. They're, even though they're offering, be a blessing. Be a blessing. That's unbalanced. If, if, if I'm in an unbalanced relationship, if I'm in an unbalanced relationship, I'll never prosper. I'll never get out of a hole because you're too busy dragging me down. Yeah. You can you can put uh, uh, what are those crabs? You have to, you don't have to put a lid on them because they're continuously pulling each other down. It's an unbalanced relationship. Unbalanced relationships where once it's one sided. It's always one sided. Always one sided. It's never equal. Now I may not be able to do financially what you can do for me. But I can do something. There's something that I can do other than financial to add value to your life. All right. Praying for you. Yeah. Um, giving you something. Yeah. Encouraging you or something. Yeah. There's something I can do to add value to your life. It's unbalanced relationships. Even marriages mm -hmm. can be unbalanced. Yeah. And then we take a look at Secrets. Uh -oh. Secrets. Uh -oh. Secrets. When we hold secrets, secrets kill. We're holding secrets. Secrets need to be addressed. Secrets keep us in bondage. Right. Secrets keep us in a deficit situation yeah, yeah, yeah. because we can never be honest with ourselves or others. That's true. If we walk in dishonesty, God cannot profit us. God cannot prosper us if we're keeping secrets. Yeah. If we're if we're living double, whatever double lie, whatever it is, whatever the secret is, we need to get that secret out and deal with it before the night is. I'm not going into 2024 with any secrets. I want everything out in the open because God cannot heal, God cannot bless, God can't do anything with us if we're holding secrets. There should be no secrets. Now, it is no secret what God can do. All right. Now, it should be a secret what I'm doing. <laughs> if I'm doing it, I get out open, God can address it, and God can heal it. Don't hold secrets. All bad. All bad. Okay. Strongholds. Strongholds will never prosper in God if we have strongholds that we're still yet dealing with, that we haven't overcome. We're not allowing God to heal. We're not allowing God to address it. Strongholds, homosexuality, lesbianism, alcoholism, drug abuse, those are strongholds. Those are things that keep us in bondage. Those are things that keep us in a deficit situation. Things that, that, that are very difficult to be free from. This is why I need to be in balanced relationships. This is why I need to be Surrounded by people who can nurture me, right. care for me, yes, people who know what it's like yes. to be in debt, to, to, to be in the bottom, to, to suffer. What am I doing? I'm addressing my stronghold by allowing God to use other people in my life mm. to help me. Yeah. I can't do this thing by myself. No. I need God's help. Strongholds. No. Let's deal with strongholds on tonight. Yeah. Anything that's holding you back, anything yeah. that's causing you not to be able to be profitable, yeah. anything that takes value away from your life uh -huh. is a stronghold. 
Overspending is a stronghold. Overeating is a stronghold. Yes, yes. Watching too much TV, stronghold. Mm -hmm. I'm wasting time. Time is value. Time is money. I think we are in the green. Are we in the green? Yeah, I think we're in the green. Yes, we're in the green. What kinds of things? Now, these those things take value away from us. Those are the things that keep us in the deficit, and those are the things we drag from year to year to year to year. We never address. Spiritual growth and development will add value to your life. The more time we spend with God, the more he adds to our life. The more I get into the word, the more value he adds to my life. The more memory verses I have in my arsenal, I can address the enemy. Why? Because I'm developing myself spiritually. I'm growing spiritually. God is prospering me spiritually. I'm spending time with him. The more time I spend with God, the more value he adds to my life. The less time I spend with God, there's not much he can do for me. Because I'm not doing my due diligence to make sure I am spiritually growing and developing. Yeah. One of our goals or one of our New Year's resolutions should be, I want to continue to grow and develop in the things of God. Uh, that should be one of my major goals for 2024. Uh -huh. Next one is, Yes. Integrity. Integrity is everything. If your word is no good, nobody will trust you. You can't add value to nobody's life if you ain't got no integrity. There's nothing you can do for anyone. No one will trust you. No one will allow you to be a part of the circle if you have no integrity. We've got to address the wreckage of our past. We've got to address the mistakes that we've made. We have to address the things that we did wrong. We have to address the damage that we've done. I want my integrity back because if I have no integrity, there's no way that God is going to prosper. There, 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 there's, there's, no, there, there's no profit unless there's integrity. Can you be trusted? I'm not going to allow you to run my cash register when you have sticky fingers. I'm not going to let you uh, run, be in my bank if you, don't, if you don't know how to count money. Oh, you know how to count money. It just, it just goes wrong. No, 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 no. I need you to have integrity. God is looking for people who have integrity. Why? Because integrity adds value. Integrity is an asset that will profit you. Integrity will open doors for you. Integrity will change your life. Integrity will improve your marriage. Integrity will improve your finances. Integrity will get you that job that you want. Integrity will get you out of trouble and keep you out of trouble. Integrity is a, is, has to be developed. Trust has to be earned. Integrity comes when I can be but make it on. Yes, I said it on. Yeah, yes, I said it. Being honest with myself and being honest about what my role was. Integrity will open doors that have never been open for you. Now we're walking in prosperity. Now we're walking in newness. Because now God's giving yet another chance. This is another chance. This is another chance God is giving me to improve the quality of my life. I'm out of balance. This will put me back in balance. Yes, this right here yes, will put me yes, back sir. in balance. Yes, because yes, I've got my integrity back. Yes, I can be trusted now. Value. I'm adding value. Value to others. Others can add value to me because I can be trusted. I have to learn how to walk in integrity. Yes, Ah, Thessalonians 4 and 10 and 11. Let me grab that scripture real quick. What? That scripture is, this is an awesome scripture. Mm -hmm. 
Grab this here. Yes, First Thessalonians 4, 10 and 11. Let me see if I can find it here. We have. First. I'll find it this way. So we have. Okay. You have yes. Yeah, yeah, 4, 10, and 11. Uh, the first chapter? Yes, uh, first, yeah, 1st Thessalonians, yes. 1st Thessalonians, what chapter? Uh, uh, verse 10, uh, chapter 10. Chapter 10? 4, 4, yeah, chapter 4. Chapter 4. Mm -hmm. And what, verse 10? 10, yeah, verse 10 and 11, yes. Okay. Will we read it? Yes, uh-huh. Okay, it says, And indeed he do it toward all the brethren which are in... All Macedonia. But we beseech you, brethren, that ye increase more and more. Eleven says, and that ye study to be quiet. Yes. And to do your own business. Yes. And to work with your own hands, as we commanded you. you read 12, 12, kind of go with it. Right. Go, go ahead and read 12. That ye may walk honestly toward them that are without, and that ye may have lack. Now that sounds like value added to me. That sounds like if I study to live a quiet life. Yes. Hmm, a, a quiet life. Yes. Quiet. Number one, I'm going to love all of God's family. Number one, That's I'm right. going to love all of God's family. Yes. I'm going to walk in love. I'm going to display love. Yes. Because love says you have value. Okay. If I have no love, I have no value. Yeah, right. If I have no love, I have nothing to offer you. If you have no love, you have nothing to offer me. Because God is love. If God was not love, God would have nothing to offer. All right. Because God is love, he has all to offer. He gives us love to offer to others. To add value. Love adds value to our lives. So we love all of God's family. Even the misfits, we love them. Okay. Do more. Yeah. Do more. Live a quiet life. And mind your own business. Mind your own business. Yes, There's enough going on with me. <laughs> yeah. so, we start, so, so when we do these things, we're adding value to our own personal lives and we're displaying godliness. We're displaying. We're displaying that. 1 Thessalonians 4, 10, and 11. That's a verse that we can live by. Ah, uh, yes. I want to be fruity in 2024. Fruity. Fruity. Fruits of the Spirit. Love, peace, joy, temperance, long stuff. That's a fruit of the Spirit. If I'm fruity, I want to be fruity in 2024. I want to display the fruits of the Spirit. But if you have the Holy Ghost, there's no way that you can have fruit if you have no Holy Ghost. Because it's a foreign concept. Fruiting means that I have something to offer you. I have something to give you that's going to add that. Every piece of fruit named in that particular scripture adds value to my life. Temperance, love, long-suffering, patience. Those are value-added qualities that we need to have in our lives. If we have these qualities, God will add value to our life. We'll no longer be in the deficit. We'll always be in the red. We'll always be in the green. If you're fruity, you'll be in the green. If you're fruity, you'll stay out of conflict. If you're fruity, you'll stay out of trouble. If you're fruity, God will always use you because he can trust you. And others will come to you and you'll be a blessing to many, many people if you're fruity. And find the last one. Salty. I want to be salty. You are the salt of the earth. You are the salt of the earth. What happens when the salt loses its savor? It has no value. Do you still have value? 
after all that you've been through, the trials, the tribulations, the struggles, the hard times, yes. the divorce, the car accident, the health crisis, are you still salty or have you lost your savor? I want to go into 2024 salty. I want to season. I want to, be, I want to season others. I, I want to encourage others. I want others to know that there's hope. I want, to know, I want others to know that there's healing in God's word. Right. That there's hope for you. Yeah. I'm salty. I'm salty because I, the salt of the earth, I'm, 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 I'm the salt. Salt. I, I, fla I bring flavor. Yeah. I bring flavor uh, to flavor the situations. Yeah. That's the anointing that I have. Uh, do you bring flavor or do you bring mess? Do you bring flavor where there's flavor, there's favor? Yeah. See? Ha! Where there's flavor, there's favor. Uh, I like if that. I can bring flavor to your situation, yeah. God will give me favor. Salt adds flavor. I need the favor of God in my life. I need the flavor of God. That means that I have to display myself as being salty. Yeah. Got to be the salt. I am the salt of the earth. And if I have these things, I know for a fact that God can do great, great things. Negative, lukewarmness, unstable, double-minded. Those are things I need to take a look at. I'm praying that if there are any areas of my own life, yeah. then I'm double-minded. I'm unstable. Medication. Are you kidding me right now? Really? I feel good. I feel wonderful. Don't take them. Get sick. Ugh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh -huh. now all of a sudden I want to go to the doctor. Now. <laughs> Unhealthy relationships. Relationships that keep me in bondage, yeah. that keep me in debt, that keep me in a deficit situation. Not good. Unbalanced relationships. I'm with users. I'm with people who have no integrity. I'm with people who are keeping me in my past. They're keeping me in bondage. They're the ones who are keeping me in my stronghold. Secrets. Let me go ahead and make sure that if I'm holding any secrets, if I have any secrets, I get those things out and I expose them. The devil will be exposed and the devil has to flee. The devil likes to hide. And he hides through secrets. Secrets kill relationships. Secrets kill the anointing. So we have to address secrets. I don't want to go into 2024 with secrets. I want everything out in the open so God can heal. Strongholds, how many years are you going to continue in that thing? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. God forbid. Strongholds. We have to know how to, look, if I have to go to rehab, I'll go to rehab. If I have to go get counseling, I'll get in counseling. I want this thing off of me. I want it gone. I, I, I want this thing out of me. It's a stronghold. I identify it, I address it, and God's gonna heal and deliver. How do so our assets are you know, like Assets, spiritual growth and development. I'm spending daily time in the Word of God. Mm -hmm. I'm spending devotion time, quiet time. I stop answering my phone until 9 a.m. Because I want to hear God's voice clearly. Integrity, I've got to have integrity. I have to be able to be trusted. If God is going to add value to my life, He has to, he has to be able to trust me. And we talked about First Thessalonians, living a quiet life, That's it. loving all of God's people, uh -huh. doing more for God, yeah. and minding our own business. And then we have fruity, displaying the fruits of the Spirit in our lives, making sure that we always stay in the positive with our attitude, with our behavior. Let your behavior always stay on the positive side of the balance sheet. 
Whenever you go to the negative side of the balance sheet, you're going to end up in a deficit situation. Remember, old man, nothing but to love him. The minute we start walking on the other side of the roots of the spirit, we're out of love and we're out of order. If I'm out of love, I'm out of order. And finally, I want to be salty. You are the salt of the earth. I love salt. We are almost done. We are almost done. We're going to... Oh, tonight? Okay, okay. Praise the Lord. We're going to um, actually, uh, we're going to do two things. Uh, uh, pastor? 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 Oh, come on. I'm going to, I want to, I, I, I um, this is awesome. I want you to come for just a second. So what we're talking about is profit and loss. And I want you to, um, if you can pray with our audience, there's someone on tonight who's struggling, who's out of balance. Yeah. There's someone on tonight that, 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 that is having difficulty. They can't understand why they're never living a life of prosperity. They can never understand why they're still struggling with that same thing, that stronghold. They, they can never get out of that. We, we want to go into 2024 free. We want to go into 2024 with no hindrances. We want to go into 2024 with none of that other stuff. I, I don't want a, a stronghold. I'm tired of carrying this thing around. It's like a, it's, it's like a backpack. That I can never see you to put down. And every year, all I'm doing is I'm just adding stuff to the backpack. I'm just adding every year, every year. The backpack is getting heavier and heavier and heavier. This is your day to identify what's in your backpack. How do I get out of that thing? Right here. I'm going to begin involving myself with activities that add value to my life. That are going to church Spending time with God quietly is profitable. Fasting, I'm still praying about fasting. Because I see no profit because my body is being, what's the word I'm looking for? Tested uh, when I fast. Yeah. But through the sacrifice, uh, because I made that sacrifice, what does God do? I'm going to add value to your life because you're giving up something. I'm going to contribute to you. There's somebody online right now who's struggling, who's hurting, who does not want to go into 2024 with this backpack, with that stuff we've been carrying since the first marriage. And we're on our third. We have went through nine ministries and can't seem to be able to fit in any of them. Because I'm a liability. I'm a liability. Because I have no integrity. I'm a liability because I can't tell the truth. I'm a liability because I'm double-minded and on my ways. I'm lukewarm. I need help. I need prayer. Pastor, can you come pray with our audience on tonight? There's someone struggling. There's someone struggling. I, I, feel, I feel that you have a word. I feel you have a word for people who are out of living out of balance. Who want to be set free. People who just wanna, who just wanna be free from this. I'm tired of carrying this around. Oh my God, oh my God. I don't know who I'm talking to, but there's someone struggling on tonight who just wants to end it. No, 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 no. Don't end it. This is your this is your opportunity. Amen. Hi, Yahoosh. Thank you, Father. One of the things for 2024 is that we got to close the door in 2024. It's some doors that need to be shut and nothing else can come in. As long as the door is open, the devil can bring things in. In Revelation, Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will open, I will come in. But when you bring Jesus in, Jesus can get 
the front room clean, the bathroom clean, and he, he moves to each room at a time. It don't happen all at once, but we have to allow him to come in so that he can do the work. It's just like if you have somebody tied up in a house, the strong man got you tied up, but if you let Jesus in, then he unties that person and he kicks the devil out. The devil got to get out. In every room he messed up in our life, I believe God will move one room at a time to cleanse it. He won't hurt you, but he'll make sure that it happens. And so I, I believe God for people closing the door in 2024. Get rid of, like he said, the things that's in the backpack. That's not going to happen if we don't allow Jesus to come in and clean up the house. That backpack can be our house, our dwelling places, the things we allow to come in that's still there and they need to be moved out. And we can shut the door once Jesus begin to get those things out of our life. But we got to open the door first to Jesus to be able to close the door to Satan. So Father, I thank you for the word that was given by Pastor Brown. I believe that it was from you. I believe you're looking at the things in our life. You're looking at what happened in 2023 and even the years before, Father. And I thank you, Lord, that you are a heart regulator and a mind fixer and that you would come in and you would get rid of those things that's hindering us, that's weighing us down. I thank you, Father God, for this audience that heard the word. I pray, Father God, that they be set free and, Father God, that they would move strategically and purposefully in 2024, that they would shut the door so that you can have your way in, the, in their lives and that you could go in and cleanse every room in their life, Father. I pray that the word continue to go forth from Pastor Brown and this platform, and I pray that the listeners will tune in and be set free. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm free. Praise the Lord. I'm free. No longer bound. No more chains holding me. My soul is resting. It's just a blessing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm free. Are you free? I'm free. Praise the Lord. I'm free. No longer. No longer bound. No more chains holding me. No more chains holding me. My soul is resting. It's just a blessing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody needs to declare that. You're free on tonight. You're free from bondage. You're free. You can now walk into 24 knowing that the books have been wiped out. Ha! I'm telling you. Jesus wiped the books out. He paid the price. He paid the debt. So we're no longer in a deficit situation. But it's up to you going forward. What do you do with the clean slate? You can get free, stay free. And be free. Up to you. It's all about the decisions that you make. Lord, help me to be a better bookkeeper. Help me to be a better accountant. Because you're holding me accountable. The books. We'll go over the books when we get to heaven. We're going to go over the books. And I want my books to be clear. I don't want God saying, uh-huh. I, I want no red mark on my book. Today is your day of freedom. Tonight, you can lay it down and let God have it. You are free in Jesus' name. But we thank you for this broadcast. We thank you, Lord, that we have done the balance sheet. We've gone over our profits and loss. We've identified our assets. We're going to identify our liabilities, those things that are holding us back, those things we need to let go. And Father, we find hope in you. 
Hope in knowing that you're going to navigate us through. I am healed from all that is making me spiritually sick. I'm healed from deficit. I'm healed from debt. I'm healed from strongholds. I'm healed from all that keeps me in bondage. No more shortfall in my life. And the harvest comes when I can share with others. I can be salty and fruitful. We are the salt of the earth and we display fruits of the spirit in our own lives. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for watching our broadcast. We pray God's blessings on your life. Happy New Year. 10 o'clock here at Victory in Christ Ministries. We will be in a New Year's Eve service. Or you can come on over across town to Greater All Nations. We'll also be in evening watch service. God bless you. May God keep you as our prayer.